As the new school term gets underway and many of us head back to work, you may find yourself suffering from the seasonal sniffles. How easy is it to tell the difference between COVID and the common cold? Today we're joined by Professor Tim Spector, who warns the symptoms can be alarmingly similar. Uh, he is here alongside Dr Sarah. Morning to both Good of you. Good morning. So, Tim, the Government UK site says the most important symptoms of COVID-19 are recent onset of any of the following. A new continuous cough, a high temperature, a loss of or change in your normal sense of taste and smell. Those we're used to, but you say there's a possibility here that the variants have changed the symptoms. Yeah, well, it's not only the variants that might have changed the symptoms, but also having vaccines and uh, the check that things have changed over time so that many of us have been exposed to the virus. So all we can say for sure is that the top uh, five symptoms at the moment are very different to the ones that the government is talking about. And uh, this is what we're seeing in the, in the Zoe app data. So we have a million people giving us every week uh, their data and telling us whether they're testing positive or negative. And of those testing positive, we're seeing a completely different picture of the common symptoms. And other countries have recognised this, but the UK government, for some reason, has, for the last six months, sort of tried to ignore it. And it's, it's causing problems because many people, perhaps up to half of cases, are going unrecognised because they have basically um, symptoms that are uh, very cold-like. So headache, sore throat, uh, runny nose, sneezing. Uh, and then the only one that gets into the top five is loss of smell or taste. We're now seeing fever is really low down the ranking of what we're seeing at the moment. And even rarer are things like uh, shortness of breath or persistent cough. So, you know, it's, it's a combination of factors, but we've got to face what the reality is. The reality is out there is most people getting COVID now are presenting with cold-like symptoms, and we need to be aware of that, uh, not only for kids going to school, but people visiting care homes and, and vulnerable people and uh, going to work and spreading it around. So, so it's really them... important that this message gets out there. Can I just ask you then, so obviously, you know, the kids have just got back to school. It was only yesterday in our news review and our roundup, we were talking about that it's 50% more children are sort of displaying serious mental health problems because of being locked down from not going to school, from not seeing their friends. If we are now entering into this situation where you're suggesting here that if we are displaying symptoms of a cold, that what, what, should, what should we be doing then? Not, not going into school? What do our kids do? Well, I think we have to be sensible. And um, if, if you are having cold-like symptoms and there isn't a lot of cold virus around, which there's currently about one in 90 people have COVID. So according to our data on the Zoe app, um, you know, it's, high, it's quite likely that these symptoms are COVID and not uh, a cold. It will vary at different times of the year, but, I mean, depending but, which but is but more Tim, common. As we're, as we're sitting here now, I think, sorry, you just had a cold. I know that I, I know two or three cold. people yeah. around me who've just had a cold and they've been tested and it is just a cold. You can, is this where we are now? So that so the usual cold that you get in the winter now is a, this terrifying, could possibly be the fact that, right, you can't send your kids to school, lock yourselves back down again. It's just a cold. It's going to be very hard to tell. And I think we have to be honest and, and try and work out a practical way around this. I'm not saying we should go back to bubbles or sending everyone home, but uh, if you or your kid has a cold-like symptoms, just, you know, for a couple of days until those symptoms go away, work from home, keep away from other people, get a lateral flow test. And so uh, if you have the lateral flow test other and it comes up doing. negative, is that okay then to go to school or go to work? Would that be okay? Or are you suggesting even if that comes up negative, we should be taking ourselves out of the equation? I think until you feel better, it, it is, you know, while you're feeling unwell, uh, you should stay at home as much as possible. And, you know, this is should, it's probably going to be the practice we're going to have for the next few years is we don't want people going to the office or school that are sneezing, uh, coughing all over people, uh, potentially giving them not only COVID, but also other viruses. And uh, we can't well, at the moment tell the what there's, they are. It there's the rub, Tim. Sense.
that's suddenly, you know, you don't want people going in and giving each other coughs and colds. We've lived like this forever. We've given each other coughs and colds. Covid came along and changed the, the ballpark a wee bit here. We can't end up being paranoid about winter coughs and colds. And my daughter's just had a persistent cough, tested herself, PCR test, the whole thing. It was just a cough. She was paranoid, terrified to go anywhere because of the fact that she was coughing. She wanted a big sign on herself saying it's just a cough. Um, and that's where we've ended up now. So where we would normally have just had coughs and colds and gone through the season with them, um, now, now you're saying, oh, you've got to be careful, don't go to work, don't go to school, because you might give someone a cough. Yeah, but you might give them COVID as well. And, you know, people, we have one of the highest hospitalisation rates in Europe at the moment because we've got too complacent about COVID. We've gone from one extreme of being over-worried to the other extreme of saying, we don't have to worry about anything, vaccines will take care of it. And I think it's the wrong attitude. We have to have somewhere in the middle. I'm not saying you have to stay at home for two weeks or exclude or anything like this, but two or three days where you can just carry on, uh, you know, working from home rather than going to the office, rather than visiting elderly relatives, it's what other countries do all the time in cold season. They don't want to give people flu or, or colds. And I think we've got to work out this middle ground between what you're saying is, is paranoia about it and, and, and closing the whole school down to just individuals using masks, taking more care, not coughing over people and just being sensible. Because at the moment, the Zoe app is showing that cases in kids is the fastest increasing rate at the moment. And that's because schools are focusing only on the old fashioned symptoms and not on uh, cold like oh, symptoms. Right. Just telling people, take a test if it's negative and you're better in two days, come back to school. Go back. But, All right. You know, let's, that, um... to my mind, will be fairly easy to do. OK, let's move on. Dr. Sarah, let's speak to you because obviously you're a GP, you're sort of on the front line with all of this. What are you seeing coming through your doors? I mean, colds are rife. Yeah, at the moment. They, they are coming yeah. in. We know that, you know, the common cold is caused by over 200 different viruses. So it's not uncommon that we will have, you know, colds coming in and out throughout this season. And I am starting to see it significantly. Um, but you know, I, I think I, I understand what Tim's saying. I think it's about being considerate. Um, so where we would, you know, not want to sneeze on people, we wouldn't want to go into work whilst we're unwell and spread it to everyone. I think that's fair. But I think if you're well with it, we can't really be, you know, stopping our entire lives over a sniffle. Are we um, getting into a better place, do you think, a more considerate place? That before COVID, we would have gone to work with a cough and a cold and feeling a bit rough today, but I'm going to go anyway. Um, and you do see people sneezing sideways, but not into their arms and all of that sort of thing. Has it made us think more perhaps about being that much more considerate if we are unwell with something that isn't COVID? I do like to think that it has made us a little bit more altruistic. The psychology behind all of this has changed things. And I think now that we are all set up a little bit better to work from home, people might have um, pushed away that feeling of guilt of, oh, I, I have to go into work. Now they know that they can work from home if needed. Hmm. Not so easy to school from home, though, no, because absolutely. that side of things is shut down. And, of course, if your child can't go to school, then you also can't go to work. Um, really important, as we always say here, uh, flu jab as well. That is something that can is your sort of defence against this also, and obviously the COVID jab itself. Exactly. So the flu jab is coming out, it's being spread out um, to, to um, people over the age of 50, pregnant, those with certain health conditions, etc. And it's so important more than ever because, firstly, you don't want to be co-infected with flu and COVID. Um, and secondly, we know that you can be, you know, more uh, at risk uh, if you are in one of those groups of either of those infections. So it would be yeah. important to get it if you are eligible. Where's your uh, surgery at the moment with the booster jab? Um, so we are uh, rolling out boosters. I actually just asked about mine today, so hopefully I'll be getting mine on Thursday. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, Tim, just finally then, um, if you are double vaccinated, should you stay off work with cold symptoms? Uh, yes, if you can. I, I think... That, that is the sensible approach. Uh, you get a lateral flow test. If you've still got symptoms, it's probably worth getting a PCR test because you may not be producing enough virus to, to trigger that positive test. And I think everyone's got to realise that, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, with one in 90 people having COVID, uh, every, uh, all these respiratory symptoms, you know, it could be either because one in three cases at the moment of all new COVID is someone who's double vaccinated. So... 
it is not a guarantee. It does reduce your risk of getting it. It re dramatically reduces your risk of dying. But we're still seeing 15,000 people who have double vaccinated uh, getting COVID every single day. Mm -hmm. So I think the public needs to be aware that, you know, everybody is still at risk of COVID and they can still transmit it. We've got to all behave sensibly. But hopefully there's a hybrid between, you know, this two, this old fashioned two week uh, staying away from people and a couple of days where you just get yourself tested and when you're most infectious, stay away from other people. I think that's the sensible approach Thank we all you. need to be taking now. Thank all you right, very so much. Thank Thanks you. for your Thanks, time. Sarah. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. See you in a bit.